can find everything, mm. anything in Tsukumomono groceries. Sometimes the law is compatible with human nature, but sometimes the two conflict. Balancing the two is a discipline in its own right. Mind you again, the law can be both a help and a hindrance. Sometimes the law is compatible with human nature, but sometimes the two conflict. Balancing the two is a discipline in its own right. Mind you again, the law can be both a help and a hindrance.
The case before us is a strange and unprecedented one indeed. Sorry, we don't serve the general public. I'm afraid you'll have to leave. Wait! We're not the general public! Well then, you must be a couple of wandering outlanders that snuck into the nation, judging by your attire. <gasps> Are our clothes really so... Uh, oh, uh, what time I... Hmm, the Yashiro Commission's seal. This must be from Mr. Toma. It seems there's more to you than meets the eye. In which case, welcome to the Komore Tea House, a safe haven for the Yashiro Commission. Well, that sounds more like it. Forgot their promise. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. What? Is that dog talking to us? <laughs> Relax. No need to look so surprised. Huh. So you didn't see anything like this when you were in Leo Harbor? Ah, now that you mention it, this does suddenly seem less out of the ordinary. <laughs> all right, all right. I've had my fun. You're this close to getting an ugly nickname, mister! <laughs> well, I've had some time to kill, given that I've been waiting here for you for so long, as was the case in Rito. So I came up with this little fun greeting for when you arrived. But in all seriousness, I would like to apologize about that little test you went through earlier, though it was quite necessary. It helped us determine whether or not to bring you before Miss Kamisato, and whether you had the courage to face the lightning alongside us. Hmm. Don't think that Paimon's gonna forgive you just because you're getting all serious now. <laughs> Sorry, did I overdo it? My apologies. Let me just say this. You've often found yourself skirting the rules from the very beginning, haven't you? Naturally, this is due to your unwavering and resolute determination. A long time ago, we had a friend who was much the same, but when the lightning struck... Ah, so you've heard of his story. Hmm. His light still burns all the more brightly. Yes, of course. 
I will bring you to the Kamisato residence where the Yashiro Commission is located. But before that, there is one other place I was hoping you both would accompany me to. Oh? Where? I would like you to come with me to the statue of the Omnipresent God. It's still under construction now, but you can already see it from practically anywhere on Narukami Island. Mind you again, the law can be both a help and a hindrance. Interesting. The case before us is a strange and unprecedented one indeed. Uh, the books were more interesting in the past. Hmm. Mind you again, the law can be both a help and a hindrance.
books were more interesting in the past. Often, do they? Huh? Are Paimon's eyes playing tricks? Or are there things embedded in the statue? Visions. Visions? You mean all the visions that are collected from the Vision Hunt Decree are put into the statue? So you've already heard of the Vision Hunt Decree. Before I try to explain... I should perhaps remind you first that Mondstadt is the City of Freedom, and Lia is the City of Contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. The Raiden Shogun is both the nation's most powerful ruler and its deity. The Eternity in question is her endless and unchanging will to rule over Inazuma. As such, she relies on the Tri Commission to regulate the nation's affairs and the Sokoku Decree to limit the people's movement. The Shogun wishes to keep Inazuma in stasis, allowing the stream of time to flow from one end to the other without disturbing it for all time. Seems like every god has their own will. Of course, this is my own limited understanding. As for the reason behind the recent Vision Hunt Decree, Perhaps the Shogun believes that visions grant people the power to change, and that her eternity doesn't allow for such instability to exist. Whatever the case, the fact is that the Raiden Shogun has dispatched the Tenryo Commission to scour the nation for visions, embedding each one in this statue. And this statue of the omnipresent god can be seen as Inazuma's symbol of eternity. Raiden Shogun is being... oh, I don't know... selfish? <laughs> Only outlanders such as yourselves would ever dare speak out so directly against the Raiden Shogun. And yet, I agree. The Vision Hunt Decree is something that simply should not exist. And Miss Kamisato has been committed to fighting it since the day it was announced. <laughs> Are you okay? You look like your mind is elsewhere.
Sound? What sound? I didn't hear anything. Did something happen? Yeah, you touched the statue, and then... And then what? Aspirations? Hmm. That would seem to confirm the saying. Have you heard it before? That when a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. That is where visions come from. In other words, a person's vision represents their ambition. So if what you've just said is true, then the ambitions of these people are stronger than I imagined. All right. Time for the next stop on our tour of Narukami Island, the Kamisato residence. <sighs> Finally! Yeah. <laughs> 
Please speak to President Sun. I just... And unrelenting willpower. Okay, okay. and unrelenting willpower.
Just what will we come across this time? Okay, I'll bring you some.
find a place where the big shots of Inazuma live, huh? Hmm. Paimon kind of expected it to be snazzier. Welcome at last to the Kamisato residence, honored guest. Miss Kamisato is delighted to finally meet you. Is this the Shirasage Himegimi you keep going on about? So, uh, where's she at? <clears throat> oh, uh, behind the screen? Yes. <laughs> As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission, this is how Miss Kamisato is accustomed to receiving guests. Consider it a time-honored tradition within the Yashiro Commission. Forgive me if this is an unwelcome surprise. Mm, makes sense. She's a super important person after all. Please forgive my lack of courtesy for receiving you in this fashion. Especially following such a long and wearisome journey over the sea. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. And Toma assures me that you do indeed possess the power to change the tide of the times. At present in Inazuma, in the name of the Vision Hunt Decree, the people's aspirations are being senselessly trampled underfoot. Though the Yashiro Commission serves the Shogun, it is the people with whom we share close bonds, given the contact we are required to have with them in the performance of our duties. A Commission's power rises and falls with the trust of their people. Thus, we cannot remain indifferent to this situation without also remaining indifferent to our own fate. Traveler, lend us your power and we can... Oh. Ah, <sighs> see, milady, it's just like I said. This will take us nowhere. Please, wait! Please, don't go! <sighs> I will introduce you to the Raiden Shogun, on one condition. You must fulfill three small wishes on my behalf. What are your wishes? They pertain to three whose visions were taken from them. Perhaps once you've met them, you will understand. A warrior who guards a village, a former samurai who helped carry out the Vision Hunt Decree, and a swordmaster determined to become the best in the world. Does Paimon get that right? Correct. Please do all you can to help them. I will await your return here. <laughs> then, you have my gratitude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do great.
all this about? Why are you doing this? Why leave all of a sudden, after all these years? Precisely. It's much too sudden. We've had no time to prepare. The children are desperate for you to take them out to play. Please, we urge you to reconsider. That must be the guy Ayaka told us about. Let's go over and see. <sighs> if you want my opinion, something to do with the Vision Hunt Decree. It's clear that Tejima had done nothing wrong, and still they confiscated his vision. After that, he became a completely different person. I can't claim to fully understand it, but I could tell that he'd lost something very important to him. He went off on a walk, alone, circled the village a few times, and then out of the blue, he announced that he was going to leave and become a wanderer. Truth be told, we aren't sure whether trying to keep him here is the right thing to do. But equally, it doesn't feel right to let him leave when he's in this state. He's a lost soul. Seems like he's a well-respected guy around here. Ah, you must also... Tejima has protected this place ever since he arrived here 30 years ago. Keeping out the treasure hoarders, fending off any monsters that draw near, resolving quarrels between the villagers. He has put an enormous amount of work into looking after this place, and we all think the... But now, all of a sudden, he says he plans to leave us. We can't help but wonder... Was it something we did? We will gladly apologize if that's the case. All we want is for him to stay. One day, I'll be as great as... You must be Tejima. So what's made you want to up and leave all of a sudden? Me? I... It's not a question of why I want to leave. But a question of what reason I would have to stay. True, but that's not why I chose to stay here. And what made me want to come here 30 years ago? And why have I never wanted to leave in all that time? I don't have answers to those questions, because I can't remember anymore. Ever since they took my vision away, it's like... a slice of my memory is gone. In the past, I knew I wanted to stay here. But whatever resolve I had then, it's gone now. So I thought, what's to stop me from moving around instead? The emptiness inside me will be there either way. Okay. Well, in that case, if we help you rediscover the reason you chose to stay, you won't need to leave anymore, right? Hmm. But if you can't remember anything, it's not gonna be easy. Oh! Maybe if you just try a little harder to remember, then it'll all come flooding back? Oh, that reminds me. Last time I brought Tejima some fruit, I do believe I saw him writing in a diary. Mm, I keep a diary? If you say so. I honestly can't seem to remember. Oh yes, yes you do! And what's more, I remember you saying at the time that you wanted to make a note of a few interesting things. Things which would prove very important at a later date. Perfect! So if we want to keep Tejima from leaving, we just need to find his diary! It must be around here somewhere. Let's take a look! If you don't mind, we will leave you to find the diary. We should head back to the village to inform the others of Tejima's situation. Tejima's diary 
all right. Let's see what we have here. Today, the villagers and I got together to cook dry braised salted fish. I messed up and burned mine a little, so I had to pretend that it was Black Snake Head instead. Today, I helped rescue a kid who had fallen in the water. After I pulled him out, he told me that his best friend Bamboo was still in the water. I searched the water the whole afternoon before finding out that Bamboo was the name of his pet crab. I went kite flying today. The string broke, so I chased after it as fast as I could. I soon realized I was never going to get it back, so I just found somewhere to sit and watch as it flew away into the distance. Hmm. Seems like your average diary of daily village life. Huh? Wait! There's more! I went to pray at the shrine again today and stayed there a while. The omamori you gave me has faded a little, but it is still my most treasured possession. Now that's the kind of info we're looking for! Time to pay a visit to the shrine! Omomori Tejima wrote about. Hmm, interesting. Looking at the color and the design, Paimon would have thought it belonged to a child. But anyway, if he had this with him all the time, there's a chance some of his elemental energy remained on it. Do you think that it might come in handy? Tejima visited a lot. The soil looks like it's been disturbed. Maybe Tejima buried something precious here. Something that kept him in the village all these years? Must be something pretty amazing if it made him stick around for 30 years. Let's dig it up and take a look. Oh, it looks like a letter. The paper's gone yellow. Must have been written a really long time ago. Konda Village. Sounds so familiar. Where is that place again? Huh. So the reason Tejima came here was to wait for someone. But he's been here for 30 years. Oh, guess they didn't show up in the end, huh? Well... Let's go give Tejima his stuff back and take it from there. I'll be. That's certainly my handwriting. And I guess the Omamorian letter belonged to me, too. <clears throat> but I have no memory of anything that's written in this diary. Still, it's clear that I was waiting for someone here, and that I chose to wait for 30 years. 
Over the years, I must have made a note of anything interesting. Anything that I could share with her when we were finally reunited. <sighs> and just look at all the things that did happen over the years. The time has flown by so quickly. Thirty years feels like the blink of an eye. How could I have forgotten something so important to me? <clears throat> now that I think about it, when my vision was taken from me, it felt like I'd suddenly been hollowed out. Love, regret, everything I felt for her, it's all disappeared. No, not especially. After all, I've forgotten who she was. Her face, her voice, the things we experienced together. I barely recall any of it. It's as if she'd never been in my life to begin with. As if all these years have been nothing but a hazy dream. I think maybe not. If this is something I waited most of my life for, I suppose I should carry on waiting. Although, what if she were to turn up eventually, only to find I didn't remember so much as her name? Wouldn't that be upsetting for her? When I think about it like that, I do feel a slight tinge of sadness in my heart. How curious. Why am I thinking like this when I don't even remember who she is? It's just like that feeling of emptiness. The feeling that something is... missing. <sighs> Thank you both for helping me reconnect with my reason for staying here. I shall remain here and keep waiting for her. Hejima seems to be dealing... okay. But still... It makes Paimon really sad. Seems it's just like Ayaka and Toma were saying. If you lose your vision, you lose all your hopes and dreams too. That certainly explains the state Tejimo was in earlier. At least we were able to help him, weren't we? <sighs> well, let's go find the next person. According to Miss Kamisato, the second one who lost their vision is a samurai from the Tenryo Commission. Oh, <laughs> 
Motion to compel! <laughs> Just like I expected.
President Song. I'm just a help. have put in much
If you ever have any... needs assistance. Leave no stone unturned.
what's on the other side of the ocean. I've been the outside world before. They say the Tenryo Commission is directly controlled by the Shogun. They're the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in Inazuma. The ones actually enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree. But why would they take action against one of their own? Uh, Paimon doesn't get it! Huh? There seems to be some commotion over there! Let's go see what's happening! I'll ask one more time. Do you intend to withhold this month's emergency provisions? The entire clan is counting on that food! We demand an explanation! How many times do I have to say it? I don't know anything about emergency provisions. You dare deceive us? Those provisions are essential. Do you understand? Not some goods to be pocketed by greedy samurai. You samurai think you can just do whatever you please? The Tenryo Commission will hear of this. Oh, huh? And who are you? One of Kurosawa's gang, no doubt. Uh, what? We just happened to be passing by! We heard the commotion and came to see what the matter was. I see. You seem to have come just at the right time. Perhaps you can help us settle this matter. This is Kurosawa. He's a samurai and a member of the Shogun's army. They issue emergency provisions to the area, and he's the one responsible for distribution. In the past, we'd simply ask him for provisions and everything would be delivered. Now, he suddenly refuses to give us anything. He's keeping the provisions for himself, I just know it! We'll starve without them! No one seems to care about us. We used to think Kurosawa was a kind man, but he's shown his true colors. He's the same as all the other samurai. It's no wonder all the visions have been confiscated. The Raiden Shogun doesn't need people like him helping her rule the nation. This must be one of the people Ayaka asked us to help. But why would she ever want us to help someone like him? Maybe we should talk to Kurosawa and see what he has to say. I've never even heard of these emergency provisions. I don't know whether it's rumors or whether they're trying to blackmail me. But either way, it's ridiculous. If I was hoarding supplies, would I still be the poor man I am today? My own family can barely get by as it is. No, if you'll excuse me, I've got other matters to attend to. And that's the first bit of truth I've heard all day. The Shogun's army told me that I was unworthy of my vision. And they said I was slacking off in my work. Apparently, I'd even disappointed the Raiden Shogun. And that's why they confiscated my vision. Well, that's strange. You were helping enforce the Vision Hunt Decree. Why would you be unworthy of your vision? To be perfectly honest, I don't seem to remember the details. All I know is that I would perform certain things every month. But... I don't recall what they were, and it's not just that, I have this unsettling feeling, like, like, someone owes me something. Does it have to do with the missing emergency provisions? I didn't take any, like I said, if I was taking them for myself, I wouldn't be going through such hard times right now. To top it all off, my house was just raided by treasure hoarders. Which is why I came here in the first place. I was chasing after them when I got held up by these two. If you don't believe me, go find the treasure hoarders yourself. If there were any emergency provisions to be had, they would have found them. Huh. He seems to be telling the truth. But we better confirm. Let's go round up those treasure hoarders and see what they have to say. We should be able to follow their tracks. They couldn't have gone too far.
We really outdid ourselves this time. All those samurai houses packed with goods? <laughs> we really hit the jackpot. I mean, besides that one house. You haven't seen anything yet. There'll be a lot more where this came from. Today's just the beginning. I'll be leading you all on an epic journey of pillage and plunder that will go down in hoarder history. You demand, boss! Seem like the treasure hoarders were after. Let's teach him a lesson. <laughs> Another <laughs> test subject. <laughs> I got careless. <laughs> You're <laughs> open. Over <laughs> here. Dodge <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> to steal that, you know? Come on, boss. Think of something. <clears throat> Not bad, kid. Y you ever think of joining the treasure hoarders? We could use someone like you. Kurosawa. Oh, I remember. So he's the one who sent you after us, huh? <laughs> Just our luck. I knew we shouldn't have hit that place. Inside. Was it stuffed with food supplies? Food supplies? <laughs> you kidding? That place was a complete mess. All we found was a strange looking box, hopefully with valuables inside. I didn't want anyone else to see it, so I was planning on opening it myself once we got back. But now that you've caught us, how about we make a deal? That little box for our freedom. What do you say? Now show us what's in the box. Huh? What the? Th there's nothing in here but IOUs. Yeah, a lot of them too. And they all seem to be made out to the owner of a general goods store, a Miss Aoi. We're talking tons of Mora here. We better talk to this Miss Aoi and get to the bottom of this. As for you guys, you're free to go. Just pray that our paths don't cross again! Y yes of course So, we redeemed ourselves for some IOUs. Uh, does that mean we broke even? Shut it. Let's just get out of here.
speak to President Song. I'm just a help. Welcome to Tsukumomono Groceries. We've got everything you need. Can I help you find something? Or perhaps, there's something you want to inquire about? Ah, so you're friends of Kurosawa, I take it? <laughs> perhaps you're here to pay off his debts. Whoa, whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves! We're just here to learn where they all came from. How did Kurosawa end up owing you so much money? Did he buy anything super expensive here? Let me think. Kurosawa would come regularly to purchase large quantities of foodstuffs. He'd always put the payment on his own account. However, the price of provisions began to skyrocket recently, and his salary was no longer enough to cover the cost. So, he started writing out IOUs to cover whatever he couldn't afford of the usual amount. So that's how he was getting those emergency provisions. But why did he have to purchase a usual amount? If the prices increased, couldn't he just buy less? Well, if you think about it, the citizens receiving the emergency provisions must have been carefully calculating how much they needed to sustain them each time. Kurosawa thought that it would be quite the disappointment for them if they found they didn't have enough, especially after such long and careful planning. So he deemed it necessary to take on the debt rather than let the people down. Wow. Kurosawa was purchasing all the emergency provisions at his own expense! And no one ever appreciated what he did. They just complained and held him accountable. People's attitudes will always reflect their circumstances. In the face of hardship, nobody cares to think twice. Uh, if you ask me, had Kurosawa told everyone the truth about the supplies from the start, then there wouldn't be such a severe backlash now. Of course, I'm sure there would still have been some unrest. What he was doing was truly a thankless deed. As for why he chose to spend his own money on emergency provisions and never tell anyone, I'm still not too clear myself. If you're still curious, why don't you go ask him yourself? I see... That reminds me, it seems that his vision was recently confiscated. Most unfortunate. If he doesn't clear the debt on his name, he'll have no choice but to sell that sword that is so dear to him. Sword? What sword? Oh, didn't he tell you? He possesses a very valuable blade. He's carried it for years now. I've asked him about its origins. He told me that it was a gift from his father, that it was too precious to sell. In hindsight, I regret that I never made an offer on it. Everything has its price, at least that's what I think. Why don't you ask him about the sword yourself? Perhaps it'll even provide you with the answers you're looking for. Oh, but before you go, if you would kindly settle today's bill. <laughs> but we didn't buy anything! <laughs> Information is also a kind of commodity, wouldn't you agree? Don't worry, I won't charge much for information about Kurosawa. Nothing we ever discussed was explicitly confidential anyway. Oh, let me think. 2,000 mora should be a fair price. At least we now know where the emergency provisions are coming from. Plus, we found out that Kurosawa has a priceless sword in his possession. Let's go talk to Kurosawa again, and see if he can remember anything.
Oh. I presented them with a choice. Either they left or I drew my sword. They left. It turned out to be a real time saver, actually. Perhaps I should start using it more often. Did you manage to track down the treasure hoarders? Everything I said was true, right? That just about sums it up. It turns out that you really were distributing emergency provisions. But they were all purchased at your own expense. Strange. Is that really the kind of person I was? I don't really have any such recollection. Even after all you've told me, I still don't remember anything. Why was I purchasing emergency provisions for everyone? And why would I put myself in such a difficult situation? <sighs> I really don't understand. But I cannot deny that when I brandished my sword to scare those two away, I could sense that my body was somehow reluctant to do so. And this sword was once wielded by my father. I remember once when I was young, I wanted to sneak out with the blade and show it off to the kids next door. My father ended up catching me in the act and scolded me severely. What did he say? <sighs> I can't seem to remember that either. It would seem that I forgot many important things when my vision was taken from me. So many memories gone. Forever. No matter how hard I try to remember, all I can remember now is my father telling me that this blade bore his life's creed. Before he passed away, he placed the sword in my hands and said to me, With this sword, you should... <sighs> hey! If you look carefully, there seems to be some words engraved on the hilt! Can you recognize the words? Virtue and justice? Somehow those two words seem to explain everything now. Taking on seemingly endless debts to make others happy. I guess that must have been my greatest ambition after all. But what use are virtue and justice? I purchased the provisions for those in need. And look how things ended up. The Tenryo Commission seized my vision, and the very people I was so desperately trying to help refused to understand me. And the irony of all of it is, I somehow still felt sorry when threatening them with my blade. I'm incapable of being a good person, yet I'm equally unable to be bad. I... I don't know what to do with myself. Yet another troubled soul. When we get the chance, let's speak to Toma about Kurosawa's debt. The Yashiro Commission would surely help cover his expenses. In any case, we must never let him sell off that sword. Yeah. Seems like losing all ambition is a terrible experience. Fortunately for us, you don't have a vision. Let's go find the next poor soul. Vision taken is supposed to be a famous sword master around these parts. Hyman heard that he's the present day master of Make Your Shisui art. Sounds pretty impressive. This is his dojo. Luckily, there's some people around. Let's go talk to them. 
Nanako, don't worry. Since they will be fine. Those thugs that challenged the dojo were strong, but he fought them all off in the end, didn't he? Maybe, but I'm still worried about him. Things have gotten dangerous before in the past, but it's never shaken him. This time, though... <sighs> it's just because he's been possessed, that's all. Once the exorcism has taken place, he'll be right as rain in no time. Hey there! Did something happen? Who are you? I don't care whether you're trespassers or just here to harass us while Sensei is impaired. Get out of here immediately! Don't make me draw my blade, or you won't live to regret it! No! You got it so wrong! Um, we just came here to... Uh... Disciples? Uh, yep, yep! We've heard all about the mighty master of Make Your Shisui Art! It's the whole reason we came all this way! To seek him out and ask him to train us! But then we got here and overheard you talking about how he got possessed or something? Hmm... From the way you're dressed, it doesn't look like you're from around here. Please, accept my apologies. We've had so many people trying to cause us trouble recently that we're on high alert. You haven't arrived at the best of times, I'm afraid. Since they got possessed recently, and he still recovered. I see you are earnest in your pursuit. <sighs> okay, how about this? My fellow disciple Nanako and I will explain Sensei's situation to you in a little more detail. Then you can decide whether to stay or to leave. Sensei's name is Domon. A name I'm sure you've already heard. Though self-taught, he mastered the art of the sword to a high level. He then proceeded to defeat many other prominent sword masters, never losing a single fight. He once said that his goal was to become the best sword master in the world. And so, even while training us, he continued to hone his own art. His fervor truly inspired us, and we trained hard, determined to keep up with him. But then... Not long ago, Sensei had his vision taken away. He hasn't been the same since. He says the strangest things over and over. And he refuses to let us train. Junya and I have discussed it, and, and we both think that he's being possessed by an evil spirit. So we've asked the Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine to perform an exorcism. But if I'm honest, I still have my doubts over whether he'll completely recover. The Grand Narukami Shrine? What's that? You haven't heard of it? It's the largest shrine on Narukami Island. The Head Shrine Maiden is reputed to have very close ties with the Almighty Shogun herself. Not that we'd have any means of involving the Head Shrine Maiden, of course. But even one of the ordinary Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine would have clear power and authority to perform an exorcism. So don't worry, Nanako. Sensei is going to be just fine. The exorcism will take place this evening. You're both more than welcome to come and watch if you're interested. So, losing your vision can cause possession? I uh, guess we should come back this evening and see for ourselves. Seems Linny is saying some strange things again. Shh. So you decided to come. It's a good thing you didn't arrive any earlier. You would have had to witness Sensei in one of his fits of madness. Just now, when Nanako was attending to him, she heard him whispering a few names to himself. When she asked him who the people were, he suddenly looked panic-stricken and pushed her away. 
It looked like he was in great distress. He was covering his ears and looking frantically around him with bloodshot eyes. All the while we kept calling those names. Some of them we knew. Others we didn't recognize. But they all seemed to be the names of sword masters he had defeated in the past. One of them was Anzai. He used to be a fellow disciple of Sensei's. His senior, in fact. But Sensei defeated him in a duel many years ago. And he has been a wanderer ever since. Sensei wouldn't stop calling his name. <sighs> Thankfully, the Shrine Maidens managed to subdue him. So the exorcism can finally continue. The ritual has now begun. All we can do is patiently await the result. Here's hoping Sensei will be back to his normal self very soon. Please, excuse me for a moment while I fetch some water. If he wakes up, he is sure to be thirsty. did you catch up with me so quickly? Are you sure you're Dolmon's disciples? You move even quicker than he does. Unless... I guess it's been a few years. Maybe his skills have improved again. Um, excuse me! We're the ones asking the questions here! First off, who are you? And what are you doing sneaking around these parts? Hmm? You seem like bad news, mister! Bad news? <laughs> I'll have you know I trained side by side with Domon back in the day. Long before you ever showed up. I don't care to talk about that time anymore. But if you must know, I am Domon's senior. His senior? Wait... That means you must be... Anzai. Yes, that's me. Because I don't wish to see Dolmon or anyone else associated with him ever again. When we were young, we trained under the same sword master, studying Make Yoshi Sui art together. I had begun training five years before him, and everyone looked up to me as a steady and dependable older disciple. Practitioners of Make Yoshi Sui art seek to achieve stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. So the majority of disciples are indifferent to rank and reward. I was no exception. But Domon was different. The first thing he did when he joined was go straight to our sensei and ask him, with a beaming smile on his face, how to become the best in the world. Sensei scolded him and told him that the art of the sword should not be used for such vain ends. Sensei said that coveting the title of the best sword master, barely days into his training, showed that he had a fickle mind, and that this would impede him from ever mastering the blade. I thought so too at the time, but Dolmon began making swift progress in his training and even started catching up with me. Only then did I realize that it was Domon who had long since freed his mind from all agitation. He was consumed by his singular desire to become the best in the world. He sought nothing less than perfection in the art of the sword, and nothing could deter him from this goal, no matter what stood in his way. Sure sounds like he meant business. So how come you don't want to ever see him again? Because until he arrived, 
I was convinced that I would succeed our sensei as the master of Meikyo Shisui art. Of all the disciples, I was the most gifted. I had trained the longest. Everyone had high expectations for me. Dolmon's arrival changed everything. When we sparred, I lost not just the match, but my pride and my status too. I fled the dojo that day and never looked back. Later, I heard that he sparred with Sensei too. Sensei was advanced in years by then, and unfortunately that match used up every last ounce of energy in his body. After that I wanted nothing further to do with him. Deep down though, I still respected his mastery of the blade and his commitment to the art of the sword. So, when I heard rumors that he had lost his mind, my first reaction was to dismiss them as false. How could he, of all people, have lost his mind? His mind was the sharpest of them all. He had practiced make Yoshisui art to perfection. I decided to quietly come and see if it were true. Then, to my complete astonishment, I heard him call my name. I thought mine was a name he had long since forgotten. So you see, I came here not to cause him any harm. I just wanted to see for myself. Okay, you've heard my story. You should get back now. The exorcism is probably finishing. Hmm, seems like we got it wrong this time. He wasn't here to mess up the exorcism at all. Still, Paimon's not sure we should bring him back with us. Uh, let's go see how the exorcism's coming along. isn't possessed? Does that mean that he's just lost his mind? But how is that possible? No, no, I refuse to believe it. Something's clearly wrong. Nanako, please, try not to get agitated. I am sorry. With what powers I have, I can find no sign of any malignant spirit having possessed Domon. But spirits may take a myriad of forms in this world, many of which I cannot claim to have witnessed myself. Thus, I dare not rule out possession with complete certainty. And all is certainly not lost, for I received word not long ago that Lady Yai has taken an interest in your sensei's case. L Lady Yai? Is that the same Lady Yai that I think you mean? The head shrine maiden of the Grand Narukami Shrine? That's wonderful news! Then Sensei will be sure to recover. Correct. Lady Yai is most knowledgeable indeed, and has abundant experience in the exorcism of evil spirits and aversion of great calamities. I am unable to say for certain whether an evil spirit has possessed your Sensei, but Lady Yai can give a conclusive verdict. Excuse me, Miss Inagi, but I must ask, should we prepare a greeting gift for Lady Yai? That won't be necessary. All that is required of you is your timely arrival at the Grand Narukami Shrine. Lady Yai does not like to be kept waiting. I must leave now, but we will meet soon at the shrine. I wish Domon a full and speedy recovery. Who'd have thought Lady Yai herself would have taken notice of our Sensei's case? Do you mean to say that Sensei isn't renowned enough to deserve Lady Yai's attention? No, no. That's not what I meant at all. You misunderstand me. I just mean this is Lady Yai, the head shrine maiden. She has direct and close contact with the almighty Shogun herself. Um. Anyway, you should join us too, tomorrow. Given that you've traveled all this way just to meet our Sensei, we, the disciples of Mikio Shisui Art, would do our best to help you. Sure! After all, everyone seems pretty excited about Lady Yai. We're curious to meet her too. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to find out a thing or two about the Raiden Chokun from her.
I'll keep this close.
Whenever you need me, I'll be there.
Do you think that's Lady Yai? Oh, no wonder Junyu is so excited. She has a really striking presence. Also, is it just Paimon? Or did she look right at us just now? Eh, it was probably nothing. It's not like she's ever seen us before. Keep away. Keep away from me. I gave up the art of the sword. Please, let me go, I beg you. As you can see, Lady Yai, Domon has persisted in this state for some time now. He appears to see those who have lost to him in duels past, gathered all around him to persecute him. Lady Yai, it must be a possession, right? This is nothing like him at all. In the past, no matter what came his way, he would always face it with a, a confident smile. Hmm. I'm sorry. It is clear to me that your sensei is not possessed by any evil spirit. But... then d does that mean he... Hmm, yes. This is a change in the person himself. Unable to cope with the tremendous pressure he was under, he suffered a spiritual collapse. With his wits impaired, he finally descended into... madness. As one who is thrown into the sea, though he fights back desperately against his predicament, it does nothing to prevent his descent into the depths. As for what has triggered this change, I believe it must be the loss of his vision. For to be stripped of one's vision is to be stripped of one's... ambition. Stripped of his ambition? But Lady Yai, even without his ambition, why should he suffer such a dramatic change? How does that explain his descent into madness? Your school practices make you shisui art, does it not? Stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. <laughs> what a fine notion that would be if any in this world could ever hope to achieve it. There was once one who claimed to be indifferent to rank and reward, and who fled enraged when defeated by his junior. And then there was an aged swordmaster who was aggrieved enough that he crossed blades with the disciple he himself had taught. Then, what of the one who crossed blades with his own sensei and beloved fellow disciple, and defeated them both? <laughs> Can one truly remain unagitated of still mind in moments such as these? Lady, I... I I'm not sure I understand. Oh, the path of the swordmaster is filled with twists and turns. It is no small undertaking to pursue the position of greatest swordmaster in the world. It requires one to take their sword firmly in both hands and cut down the hopes and dreams of others, even those of one's closest companions. Only a deep commitment to his ambition to become the best made it possible for him to rise above the pain of these encounters, to focus on the way ahead. When that ambition disappeared, he began to doubt himself. As he battled his growing anxiety, he slowly descended into the state you see him in now. <laughs> Much like a certain fatally flawed friend of mine. Poor Sensei. To think he's been suffering so greatly. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Father. Sensei. Onsai. That's enough. Huh? Isn't that Onsai? Where did he come from? Did he follow us the whole way here? Anzai, why are there two of you? Is that you or a ghost? You're here for revenge, aren't you? I knew it would come. I never should have. You're right to assume that my feelings towards you are far from kindly. <sighs> but I didn't come here to settle a score. It's been so long now that I made peace with it years ago. You did nothing wrong that day. I just... I couldn't face the humiliation. That's why I ran. I don't think most of the people you beat along the way would hold it against you. On the contrary, when you cut our ambition short, we entrusted them to you in the hopes that they might carry you further. Now I know that we can't place our hopes in you any longer, since you've been stripped of your ambitions too. But that is no reason to strip them of theirs. 
Follow the way of the sword all the way to the highest peak. You taught them that, didn't you? But what if one day, the same thing happens to them? I put everything I had into trying to become the best. But what if it was all a huge mistake right from the start? If there's a chance they'll end up like me one day, I'd rather they stay where they are now than go any further down this path. Have you asked them what they think? Sensei, after you rescued me from the hands of the pirates, I told myself I would follow in your footsteps for the rest of my days. I can't know whether I will suffer in my future as you do now. All I know is that here and now, in the present, I wish to continue. I want to keep going until the day that I can stand before everyone with my head held high and announce that I, like my sensei Domon before me, am a master of Meikyoshisui art. Nanako's far from the only one. Actually, all of us think that way. Goodness. Well, I... You see? You can place the ambition you once had in their hands. Being stripped of your ambition is something that's never happened to me, so I can't claim to understand it. But I do know what it feels like to have your ambitions crushed. That's what happened on the day that you so effortlessly defeated me. So, just as I once placed my ambitions onto you, it is time for you to release yours into their custody. You are not in the same position that I was. When I left, I had nothing to my name. But you have a great number of worthy disciples. I... I understand. I'm sorry to have made you worry for me and for the state of Miyakyo Shisui art. I no longer have the resolve to become the best in the world. The emptiness and suffering inside of me will not abate, so I cannot hope to still my mind and be free of agitation. But as your sensei, I shall commit to imparting unto you everything I have learned in my life so far. This is my promise. And I humbly ask Anzai, my senior, to hold me to my word. You can count on that. I'd be checking in on you occasionally anyway, just to make sure you hadn't lost your mind again. But I am now used to the life of a wanderer. I do not belong in the dojo anymore, so I will simply stop by once in a while to make sure you aren't cutting any corners with them. Well, don't just stand there staring at me. Say thank you to Lady Yai and then get yourself back home. So even though his ambition was taken away, his disciples can take it over on his behalf. Guess that sort of solves this one, huh? Traveler, a moment please. Lady Yai has some words for you. So, my intuition was correct. The wind that blows from afar carries fresh life to these shores. For us to meet now is premature. Nevertheless, you set foot on these islands at precisely the right moment. Hmm, I have high hopes for you, child. Don't disappoint me. Ooh, Lady Yai seems to have taken a real interest in you. She seems super mysterious. Paimon's so curious what she really meant by all that. Hmm. We can come back to it another time. For now, we should go report back to Miss Kamisato.
protection of the Electro Archon. May the blossoms of the sacred... Narukami, please. Eternally. See that he stays safe. Traveler, Paimon, it is a pleasure to finally meet you both face to face. <laughs> I have heard all about how you helped our three friends. My sincerest thanks to you. <sighs> yeah, short of getting them their visions back, it seems like there's no way to really help them. Um, Ayaka, how come this time you get to come out and meet us in person? <laughs> Because now that you have done the three things I asked of you, I consider you to be my friends. As you will observe, I dispense with the screen for Toma also. Mm-hmm. Wait a second. But isn't Toma your... um... servant? Paimon's happy to help and all, but Paimon sure as heck did not sign up to be a servant! Oh. <laughs> Paimon, you are most entertaining. Toma is first and foremost my friend, and was so before he ever became my attendant. Oh, okay then. Ayaka, you seem pretty different out in the open compared to how you are behind the screen. <laughs> Thank you both kindly. Back to the matter at hand. You have now witnessed the pain of those deprived of their visions. What are your feelings on what you have seen? Perhaps in the eyes of a deity such as the Almighty Shogun, 
The lives of those who inhabit the world are inconsequential. Thunders roar, lightnings flash, the winds assault, and the rains descent. All these things take place with no regard for the feelings of the common people. But I believe that surely you understand what they must endure. It seems that perhaps now you can appreciate my feelings on all of this. In which case, perhaps you would be willing to reconsider your stance? You will? Really? Naturally. <laughs> all right, bravo, my lady. You were right all along. See? I told you she wouldn't reject them. I'd placed my trust in the right person after all. Now then, given that the remainder of our discussion pertains to matters of a more... confidential nature, perhaps we can move to the Komori Tea House? We ought not to involve other members of the Yashiro Commission. Well, here we are again! Please continue without me. I'll keep watch. deal with this place anyway? What makes it your favorite meeting spot? This is a land that was gifted to the Yashiro Commission by the Shogun. The Kamisato clan has the exclusive right to plan, build, and repair any property on this land, and even to allow or deny access. Such privileges exist due to the Yashiro Commission's role in managing ceremonial affairs. Oftentimes, it is not appropriate to discuss details in front of bystanders. Gets it? Gotta keep a bit of mystery, right? Once the number of ceremonial affairs conducted in the city began to decline, our forebearers built a tea house here. Only members of the Yashiro Commission are permitted to come and go as they please. Makes sense. Perfect place for a secret base. In any case, we can talk freely here. I presume you have a few questions that you wish to ask me? The Almighty Shogun. I've seen her on but only a few occasions, most of them formal ceremonies. She inspires awe, commands respect, and exudes a sense of absolute authority. But as I recall, there was something else about her that struck me even more deeply. It was her almost complete lack of any emotion. In that sense, she appeared to me to be less of a ruler and more of... Well, an executive official, I suppose. Focused exclusively on her single goal of implementing eternity. Acting accordingly, without feeling. The issue is this. For the vast majority of people, the Vision Hunt Decree is something that has no implications whatsoever. After all, it is but a tiny minority of people who receive visions. Moreover, it is not unknown for visions to spark jealousy in others. Because of this, the attitude of most people towards the Vision Hunt Decree is one of indifference. How can they be like that? <sighs> Paimon's getting mad! Nevertheless, in addition to us, there is also the resistance on Watatsumi Island. Resistance? You mean like an army fighting against the Decree? Yes. Many who have lost or fear losing their visions have rallied together under Sangonomiya on Watatsumi Island to form a resistance group. To say a little more about Sangonomiya, historically, there has always been some conflict between them and the Shogunate of Narukami Island due to their different belief systems. But I do wonder whether there may be some other agenda behind their resistance movement, beyond merely fighting the Vision Hunt Decree.
course. We have tried on numerous occasions. Unfortunately, each time a proposal to repeal the decree arrives at Tenchukaku, it is promptly vetoed by both the Tenryo Commission and the Kanjo Commission, and subsequently scrapped. They invariably adopt a stance of unconditional support for the Shogun's decisions. They have no interest in discussing anything. It almost makes one wonder whether they had a hand in the Shogun's sudden decision to issue the Vision Hunt Decree. Ooh, ooh, Paimon has a question, though! Oh? What would you like to know, Paimon? Have you got a plan yet to fight the Vision Hunt Decree? To be honest, we do not. What? Please, do not forget that challenging the Vision Hunt Decree is tantamount to challenging a deity. Coming to terms with that is already a difficult step to take. So... so what are we gonna do? Well, for the moment, all we can do is try and reduce the harm that is being caused by this decree. For example, by providing vision bearers with safe refuge, or manufacturing counterfeit visions for them as a contingency measure. You're telling Paimon that there are people out there who can make fake visions? Don't underestimate the talents of the craftspeople in Hanamizaka. To the naked eye, their counterfeits are indistinguishable from the genuine article. The problem we are facing right now is that Master Masakatsu, who was providing us with counterfeit visions, has recently been arrested by the Tenryo Commission. Darn! So they found out about it? Ugh. Yes. We knew it was not a long-term solution, and that it was only a matter of time before it would be exposed. But we cannot simply abandon Master Masakatsu. Exactly. I feel the same way. But given mine and Toma's identities as part of the Yashiro Commission, breaking him out of prison would risk dragging down the reputation of the entire Kamisato clan should we be caught. That would only serve to cast suspicion on any future activity we might seek to attempt. <laughs> By no means do we intend to place the burden of such a task on your shoulders alone. When you are ready, go to Hanamizaka and look for a fireworks shop run by the Nagunohara family. There, you will find someone who can help you. Just hand it over. You don't want any trouble with me. If you think your elemental powers are enough to resist the Vision Hunt Decree, then you'd better think again. Believe me, you're not the first of your kind we've encountered, and we've seen the same unpleasant outcome time after time. You'd best save yourself the trouble. Uh, can't you make an exception? I just got this vision. I won't even use it, I promise. So this is the Vision Hunt Decree in action, huh? We can't just sit around and watch things unfold, can we? Psst! Hey! 
Wait! Huh? There's someone trying to get our attention. Come on! This way! Uh, what's going on? Can't you see we need to go help? Shh! Quiet! Just sit tight and watch for a moment. Hey! This isn't right, you know! Just because you don't have a vision doesn't mean you can sit back and watch others in trouble! Huh? Hey! Wait! You do have a vision! Shh! If you don't keep your voice down, I won't have one much longer. <sighs> alright, alright. Here. Take it. <laughs> Wise choice. Alright, let's go! What should we do now? He's already given up his vision. Doesn't he know what could happen to him after losing it? Uh, this is your fault. You're the one who stopped us from interfering. <sighs> Many thanks, Miss Yoimiya. If you hadn't swapped me a fake just now, I'm sure I would have lost it. No worries. You put on quite the convincing performance. Oh, so that's what's going on here. And to think Paima was about to unleash Paimonial wrath on Miss Yoimiya. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, think nothing of it. I could tell from your reaction we were on the same side. You just didn't know it, you know? Oh, right. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Yoimiya, the current owner of Naganohara Fireworks. It ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> Great to meet ya. Practically everyone on Hanamizaka knows Yoimiya. She's the queen of the summer festival. Without her and her fireworks, summer on Narukami Island just wouldn't be the same. Whoa, that's quite the introduction. Paimon loves fireworks. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Stop it, Hanjiro. You embarrass me. As for thanking me, you'd be better off thanking Master Masakatsu. He's the one that gave me the fake visions in the first place. His handiwork allowed me to keep my own vision. Whew, I can't even imagine trying to run the business without it. Ugh. Yes, Master Masakatsu is a good man. It's too bad good people seldom get the recognition they deserve. Master Masakatsu? Huh? Do you guys know him too? You don't say. Then it sounds like the Shirasagi Himegimi has a plan. Awesome! I've been thinking about breaking him out too recently. But if I just march straight in there by myself, I'd probably get Miss Kamisato in a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> so, what about if I join you instead? Sure, welcome to the team! Ayaka told us to go look for help at a fireworks shop. She must have meant you! <laughs> Seems like I finally got a new job to do! Have you, besides hiding vision bearers in my shop, that is? <laughs> so, Master Masakatsu is being held at the police station. I've already surveyed the area and found a way in. Whoa, talk about a reliable source! Seems we've got the right person on our team! Not bad, huh? <laughs> Let's go as soon as everyone's ready. Don't worry, Master Masakatsu, we're on our way! Time to break him out! Thank you. 
safe as always, and nothing eventful happens.
Come on, this way. As long as we stay quiet, we've got a good chance. I certainly wouldn't want to end up locked away in here. Let's find Master Masakatsu and get out of here. We should split up. I've got a little present to prepare for Master Masakatsu. <laughs> I'll be right back.
battle formation! This wall looks a bit odd. Maybe there's some special trick to it. Incinerate! 
Leave it all to me, as a dutiful maid would. Show me what you've got! Show me 
what you've got! Watch your step! I must leave no stone! Show me what you've got! From Rome! Motion to compel! Did you really think that little trick of yours could fool us? <laughs> Locking you up was just the beginning. <sighs> no! Oh no! Those Tenryoka mission brutes are torturing him! If we don't come up with a way to break him out fast, then... Huh? Yoimiya, when did you get back here? Uh, I can't bear to watch. If anything happens to Master Masakatsu, our whole plan will have been for nothing. Hey, you there! What are you doing? 
Ah, uh, ma'am. We, we were just teaching him a little lesson, that's all. Huh? Who's that? That's Kujo Sara, adopted daughter of the Kujo clan of the Tenryo Commission. She's also a general in the Shogun's army. What's she doing here? Make way, let me have a look at him. <sighs> I'm sure you're well aware that torture is strictly against military regulations. I yes, ma'am. If you are unashamed of such disgraceful action, then you are also unworthy of the Tenryo Commission itself. Do I make myself clear? Y yes, yes, ma'am. It won't happen again. Oh, Paimon sure wouldn't want to get on her bad side. Hey, this is our chance. Let's move while they aren't watching Master Masakatsu. Yoimiya, are you sure now's the right time? <sighs> Who is that? Quick, go and investigate. Yes, ma'am. They're coming! Quick, hide! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to. Don't worry, I've got us covered. Time for my little present. Ah, fireworks! Huh? Was that an explosion? It sounded like fireworks. Quick, let's hurry! <sighs> the fireworks were enough to distract them. Uh, maybe more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> fireworks aren't just for festivals, you know. <laughs> I was particularly proud of this batch. I decided to. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, Mia, this is turning into a bit of a fireworks display. <laughs> well, fireworks are my craft after all. Every batch has to be spectacular. Look, the coast is clear. Now's our chance. Yoimiya, is that you? Master Masakatsu! Sorry we took so long. Oh, those awful guards. Come on! We've got no time to lose! They could be back any minute! Oh. Yes, leave. Before I let my judgment get the better of me. He's in serious condition. Be sure he gets immediate medical attention. But remember, once he's recovered, it won't be long until I bring him right back. Uh, well... <clears throat> <sighs> Leave this place. Place. Yes. Finally, I've made it out of there. Master Masakatsu, how do you feel? Can you hold on? Don't worry. I think I can make it to the infirmary without keeling over. Thank you. All of you. I'll take him to get treated. I'll treat you to a round of drinks once this is all over. Don't worry about us. Just take care of Master Masakatsu. <sighs> Good thing we were able to rescue him. Right, Kujasara. Do you think she was making up for how the guards were treating him? It seems as though there are some okay people among the ranks of the Tenryo Commission. Uh, though Paimon would never agree with their actions in the Vision Hunt Decree, of course. How about we go tell Ayaka and the others the good news?
I see. So Kujo Sara stayed her hand. It would appear she still has some honor to her. I wonder if we should try establishing contact with her. Perhaps we could coax out some information. Unlikely. Don't forget, Kujo Sara is also carrying out the Vision Hunt decree. She obeys the orders of the Raiden Shogun without question. In her eyes, Master Masakatsu is of no threat to the decree. This is why she was so willing to allow his escape. If our true motives were ever divulged, she would act against us without a second thought. True. Though if you ask me, Master Masakatsu's release is an unexpected blessing. We are now one step closer to victory. And we couldn't have done it without Yoimiya and the Traveler. <laughs> You're turning out to be even more reliable than we expected. <laughs> Don't mention it. Indeed. Things may have turned out very differently this time without the help of the Traveler. But if we wish to mount any sizable resistance against the Vision Hunt Decree, there is still much to be done. It is time we make ready our next set of plans. There is no need to rush, my lady. Things seem to have taken a turn for the better, at least. Not only have we rescued Master Masakatsu, but our list of allies appears to be growing. Uh, yes, which reminds me. The Tenryo Commission seems to be making preparations for a celebration. They call it a ceremony of sorts. And the number of samurai out enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree seems to be waning. The days ahead may be more peaceful than usual. A ceremony, you say? Why would such a task be left to the Tenryo Commission? I don't know, but I'm sure it has nothing to do with us. Anyway, with the Tenryo Commission busy with preparations, we should have a little more breathing room than usual. Hmm, you do present a good point. Being in a constant state of alert will only tire us further. Perhaps a period of rest is in order. Toma, what would you suggest? I'd say a celebratory feast is in order. Might I suggest an evening of hot pot together? <laughs> Funny enough, I learned a new hot pot game recently. I'm sure you'll find it quite amusing. A hot pot game? What's that? Well, as long as it has to do with eating. Simply put, every person prepares an ingredient to add to the hot pot. Once the meal begins, we add all the ingredients together. Then we take it in turns to close our eyes, pick an ingredient out of the pot, taste it, and guess whose ingredient it was. Anyone who guesses correctly can go again, and whoever finishes the meal with the most points is declared the winner. Tradition even has it that the winner receives blessings from the god of hot pot. Don't you think it sounds like fun? <laughs> I've been wanting to give it a try. In fact, I've already got my ingredients prepared. You really do want to play, huh? Well, sounds like we've got our work cut out for us. Time to gather some ingredients. But what should we choose? See what we've got here. Mmm, fresh fish fillets, shrimp, bamboo shoots. Nice! You can't go wrong with these. Paimon can't wait. Paimon never thought we'd be the only ones to actually put anything edible into the pot. Don't go wasting the rest now. Ah, <sighs> this was possibly the scariest looking hot pot Paimon's ever seen. Fortunately, Toma ended up eating all the weird stuff. Uh, you can say that again. But hey, at least I got the most points. <laughs> oh, wait a moment. That doesn't feel good. I'm afraid it's your own fault for adding all those strange ingredients, Toma. The soup flavor wasn't quite the same afterwards. Even with a traveler's normal ingredients, I still couldn't guess any of them correctly. But weren't you the one who added those little cakes, Ayaka? <laughs> I think the traveler ended up eating one. Boiling cakes in hot pot? Ugh. Think of the texture. I must apologize. To be perfectly honest, I thought the cakes would be a tasty addition. Uh-oh. I'm definitely not okay. Uh, I need to lie down. <sighs> I feel like a new man. You know, Toma, all you had to do was guess wrong on purpose and it would have been someone else's turn. Talk about being competitive! 
<laughs> uh, I guess I've been feeling unlucky recently and wanted the God of Hot Pot's blessing. Perhaps I did get a little carried away. Still, I couldn't be beaten at my own game first time around. I think my luck has already taken a turn for the better. I can sense it. So without further ado, I hereby declare that the winner of today's Hot Pot Challenge is... me. Oh, brother. Ah, oh, good effort, team. Another important job taken care of. Next on the agenda, some well-earned rest and relaxation. Yes. If the Tenryo Commission truly is as busy with preparations as Toma claims, then some rest would be a welcome change of pace. And with the extra time, there are some other matters I wish to attend to. Let's all take some much-needed time off. After a few days' rest, we'll reconvene at the Komori Tea House and discuss our next operation. Downtime is hard to come by these days, so be sure to make the most of it. I'll tidy things up here and start thinking about our ingredients for our next round. <laughs> There's gonna be a sequel? Sure, why not? We should play again now that everyone knows the rules. I'll see you all later. Bye, Toma! Hmm. Seems we won't need to be visiting the Kamori Tea House for a while. Why don't we go explore some other places? <laughs> All of it, whatever it is. What exactly is it? I didn't quite catch your request. to request your assistance. But you ought not be nervous. This is not coming from the Yashiro Commission or the Kamisato clan. It is my own individual request. Individual request? You mean personal stuff? Correct. It concerns my mother. This may seem a little sudden, but in my view, you are the only person I can entrust this to. A few days ago, I was sorting through some old family belongings when I found a notebook that belonged to my mother. She wrote about all kinds of things, mostly of little consequence. But what drew my attention was a name. It is one that I have never heard before, so the fact that she mentions it so frequently, it makes it difficult for me to ignore. Probably your mom's best buddy, right? Never. And although my mother and father passed away many years ago, both my brother and I are familiar with the vast majority of their acquaintances. So, I am very curious about this mysterious individual. I would very much like to meet them. According to the notebook, their name is Tsubaki. This seems to have been someone very important to my mother. Someone with a lot of personality, who liked to have fun. Paimon thinks it sounds like a girl's name. That's what I thought too. So what do you want us to do? Do you need us to find her for you? No, no. Her address is given in the notebook. We can head straight there. I wanted you to assist me with the preparation of greeting gifts. Please keep everything I have told you in strict confidence. The proper course of action would be to involve my brother and visit her together, but he is terribly busy at present, and, on a more selfish note, 
I don't wish to involve anybody else from Inazuma in this matter. Exactly. That, and you are also a kind, well-mannered person with a genuine concern for other people. Not to mention trustworthy. I would not feel comfortable with anyone else in this situation. You can count on us! We've done greeting gifts before, so we should be able to help. In terms of payment, just treat us to some delicious food and we'll be more than happy. Wonderful! In fact, I was hoping to take this opportunity to show you both around, if you don't mind, of course. Oh, we don't mind! We don't mind at all! D Thank you kindly. Shall we head off then? Ogura Textiles and Kimonos is our first stop. Alright, sounds great! Must be. It's a festival promotion! Hey, speaking of, we haven't been anywhere fun since we arrived in Inazuma! N no what made you think that? <clears throat> Festivals are a common occurrence here in Inazuma. We in the Yashiro Commission are very well acquainted with these sorts of customs. Each season brings its own festival, and each festival in turn brings a fresh challenge to the task of maintaining public order. So, while festivals are undoubtedly joyous and lively occasions, for us, they are also a cause for concern. Oh, my apologies. I should stop thinking about work. This is hardly relevant to the matter at hand. This store here is the place I wanted to visit. Oh, so you weren't checking out the promotion? Well, let's take a look inside, then. Welcome. I have all the latest styles. Please take a look. Oh, it's Miss Kamisato, with guests from overseas. Welcome to Ogura Textiles and Kimonos. Are you here to purchase fabric or for tailored garments? Oh, greetings to you, too. I have a design here for a garment. Would you be so kind as to take a look? Oh, Ayaka came prepared. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. This could be... Mm-hmm. It could be... 
Oh, it's a very fine design. Miss Kamisato, you'd like us to make a kimono following this design, yes? Please, if you could. I'm honored that you'd choose Olgura textiles and kimonos for your tailoring needs. However, there is one rather difficult problem. Based on the design, this kind of kimono would require silk made from the silk flower. The majority of Inazuma's silk is imported from Liyue Harbor, but given the current climate... As you well know, Inazuma is currently under a strict lockdown. In all honesty, the impact on the textiles industry has been quite significant. We're struggling to import high-grade fabrics. So much of our tailoring business has been put on hold indefinitely. But of course, where our customers are able to provide the fabric themselves, we can still be of service. So you're saying we need to go and buy some silk first? If even Ogura textiles and kimonos can't get a hold of high-grade fabric, where would we buy it from? You could try the International Trade Association. They are a little better connected than we are. After all, the association brings together merchants from all over the world. The only thing is their prices. They're not the cheapest. In times like these, though, we're lucky to even have an option of getting a hold of the things we want in the first place. Huh. So even just getting clothes made is an ordeal in Inazuma. Wait, the International Trade Association? That's Karisu's thing, right? We haven't been to Rito in a while. Hmm. It looks like that will be our next stop. Thank you ever so much. We will be back once we've acquired the fabric. Oh, in the meantime, I have one other very small request. Could you? Why is she being so secretive all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Much obliged. My pleasure, Miss Kamisato. Honestly, I'm just as excited as you to see the end product. We haven't made a silk kimono for the longest time now, and this is a beautiful design. <sighs> That's very kind of you, thank you. Goodbye for now. Traveler Paimon, let's try our luck at the International Trade Association. Would you like some tea? I'll brew you some. Do you take sugar? One cube? Ah, this is it. The International Trade Association. <sighs> oh, 
Okay then, we need to talk to Karisu, right? Huh, doesn't look like he's here. Let's look around. Like we found him. Uh, what am I gonna do? Mr. Kurisu, are you all right? Oh, you're Miss Ayaka from the Kamisato clan. How do you do? Better than you, it appears. Uh. And if it isn't the Traveler, I haven't seen you in a while. I take it you've been out of Rito? Thanks again for your help last time. The Association is back in business, and it's all thanks to you. That's great, but, uh, why were you staring into space just now? Did something bad happen? Well, you see... <sighs> It's embarrassing to admit, but some of the Association's goods have been stolen... by vagrants. Which goods were stolen? It was a batch of high-grade silk. Aww. We imported a big batch of silk from Liyue several years ago. It's been sitting in storage ever since. Recently, we heard that clothing stores in the city have more or less sold all their silk stocks. So we figured now would be a good time to bring our batch out of storage. Thinking it'd probably fetch a good price. <sighs> but then... Ugh, the vagrants swiped the whole batch, then disappeared into the woods. I'd report it to the authorities, but... <sighs> well, as you know, they don't think much of foreign merchants like us. The Kanjo Commission don't want to give us the time of day. Honestly, you can just tell that our suffering amuses them. Well, I also take issue with aspects of the Kanjo Commission's operational methods, please remember, Mr. Kurisu, that while you are here in Inazuma, you should be careful with your words. Uh, oh, my apologies. I had to let off some steam. Anyway, there doesn't seem to be much we can do ourselves to get our goods back. Perhaps I'm doomed to go bankrupt after all. I am afraid I can't intervene in an official capacity, but I can still help you get your lost goods back. Of course, I would never... Wait, what? Huh? Yes, acting in my own capacity, mind you. Even then, there is no escaping the fact that my every action and word will be seen to reflect on the Yashiro Commission and the Kamisato clan. I do so not without reservation, so... I hope that you will treat this matter as confidential. That aside, as I'm sure you're aware, I'm afraid that I won't always be able to help you in such circumstances. Given your position and that of the International Trade Association, please try to exercise more caution in the future. You do not want to incur further unnecessary losses. We will. We certainly will. But, um... Are you sure this isn't gonna cause any issues... for you? What if someone high up in the Kanjo Commission sees what you're doing and doesn't like it? You're a highly respected member of society. Surely putting your neck on the line for small-timers like me can't be worth the risk. <laughs> Very humorous. Let's not forget that I am the eldest daughter of the Kamisato clan. I would be very surprised indeed if anybody in the Kanjo Commission felt that I was accountable to them for my actions. Whoa, that sent shivers down Paimon's spine! Does everyone from a powerful clan talk like that? Mr. Kurisu, 
I need to know the exact time and location of the theft, and anything that stood out about the perpetrator's appearance. Thank you so much. Let's see, it was two hours ago now, over at the, um, uh... Everyone, please follow me to the scene of the crime. The investigation starts there. All right, off we go! This is where we were robbed. Hey! Look on the ground! What are those? Huh? Footprints! Very deep ones at that. Leading towards the forest! Hmm. Presumably the depth suggests that they were carrying something heavy. Let's see where they lead! value on this. You think you can get your stuff back with this bunch? You must be dreaming. <sighs> Why you? You better hope you have the courage of your convictions. <laughs> Why wouldn't I, old man? Answer me this. You're one of those outlander merchants, right? You trade association types are worms. Coming over to our land, leeching off our people. Who's gonna leap to your defense, huh? Tell me, who's gonna stick their neck out for the likes of you? <laughs> Look at that. No response. You know I'm right. Face it. This is Inazuma. You've got no ties here. You're at the bottom of the pile. Can you really blame us for walking all over you? 
You are despicable. Hey, I just had an idea. Since you came all this way, how about we do some business? Business? Pay up, and you can take your fabric back. Sound good? If you ask me, it beats walking out of here with black eyes and a broken nose. <gasps> You're just a big bully! I... Oh, what choice do I have? Wait! Mr. Kurisu, please do not pay any money to this man. But... but... I trust you remember our agreement? If you keep your lips firmly sealed, I too shall uphold my end of the deal. Oh yes, of course! Then please stand well back where it is safe. Now, it is time for me to honor my word! Let's get down to business! <laughs> Take flight! Over here! <laughs> Let the magic begin! Motion to compel! An invisible evidence! Incinerate! Another test subject. That tingle? My apologies! <laughs> so rude, coming out to art! Surrender! The fairy should... <laughs> Take flight! Finally, I... <laughs> that tingle? Leave it all to me! <laughs> yeah. No, please, I... It was nothing. I was simply doing my duty. Miss Komisato! Traveler! Are, are you hurt? Don't worry, we're fine. The vagrants left in quite a hurry. It would seem they didn't have time to take anything with them. I believe your stolen goods should all be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. You'd best do a count. Six, eight... Ten. Yep, it's all here. Great! Now we can finally buy some silk! Buy silk? You mean you need some of the silk here? This was indeed our intent. Don't get us wrong, though. That's not the reason we helped you out. Even if it were just a few carrots or cabbages, chances are we still would have helped you get them back. Paimon thinks we're pretty lucky. If we arrived any later, our chances of getting Silk and Inazuma would have been zero. I honestly can't thank you all enough. Please, say no more. You need Silk? I'll pick out a piece for you right away. Thank you, good sir. How much do I owe you? Oh, it's free of charge. I could never ask you to pay after everything you've done for me. No, no, that will never do. Things cost what they cost, and what they cost is what I shall pay. Merchants already have enough challenges to deal with, and as Paimon explained, my help was unconditional. Please, sell your wares to me at the price you would sell them to any other customer. There is nothing to feel distressed about, because nothing... I repeat, nothing happened here in these woods today, did it? Thank you, I... I don't think I could ever repay you. You have helped me greatly and I will never forget it. I'm... Uh, 
I'm afraid we must part ways. I must get these goods back to the Association. If you ever need anything at all, just come to the International Trade Association and ask for Kurisu. Very well. And thank you for the silk, Mr. Kurisu. See you then! Bye! Safe journey home! Don't go getting robbed again! Traveler, thank you for stepping in to help out. But how come those vagrants didn't seem to know who you were? They must move in completely different circles. Maybe they've never seen anyone from the Kamisato clan before. Perhaps. Either way, I'm glad they didn't recognize me. The fewer people who know what happened today, the better. <laughs> it's not every day an important person like you helps out someone like Kurisu. It really shows what a great person you are. Oh, uh, your praise is quite unwarranted. I merely did what anyone in my position would have done. I admit that it did feel strange for me to come to his aid. But this should have nothing to do with identity or social class. As far as I'm concerned, it was one individual helping another in need. I guess that deep down, I don't see how a society can be considered just when people encounter such obstacles in their livelihoods. Uh, sorry, I'm getting off topic. Right. Let's head back to Ogura Textiles and Kimonos and give our hard-won silk to the shopkeeper. Okay! At the International Trade Association? Did they have any silk in stock? Yes, they did. Here. Excellent news! So, apart from the silk, I think everything else I need I've got in store already. Uh, I just need to go and take stock of our materials. It won't take me a moment. I'll be right back. They better all be there! I do hope nothing else is missing. Traveler, on the subject of garments, I've been meaning to acquire a new outfit for you, too. It's just... I wasn't sure how you'd feel about the idea of dressing in Inazuman attire. Oh? Are you sure? Is that so? Impressive. So travelers of your stature hold themselves to a dress code, as well as a code of conduct. Hmm. More like, when you're away from home, you've gotta live by certain rules to survive, whether you like it or not. But Paima would still love to check out some Inazuman outfits! Just what is that supposed to mean? They make them in whatever size the customer asks for! <laughs> oh, your interactions are so adorable to watch. <clears throat> hmm. Well, if you're sure, as you wish. Something else I've been wondering is... How do people in other nations dress? They sure do. Each nation has its own unique style. Traditional, fancy-schmancy, casual... All very different, but each style is suited to its region. 
The study of clothing is a profound discipline, and I still have much to learn. When clothing becomes part of the expression of one's personality, even an extension of one's body, that is quite a wonderful thing. So I am not against dressing up. Far from it. Paimon agrees. You couldn't have put it any better. Paimon, you're so adorable that you could wear anything and it would look lovely on you. Wow! <laughs> Paimon just got a compliment. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've checked my inventory. Thank you. Is there anything else you're missing? Fortunately not. I have all the materials I need. As for the size, would you like me to go by the dimensions given on the design? Yes, please. Understood. I'll get to work shortly. In total, that'll be... this much. Here you go. Is it possible to treat this as an urgent order? Well, luckily, we don't have any other urgents at the moment, so I can begin work right away. It will still take me some time, though, so please come and collect it later. Until then, I'm sure you'll find somewhere nearby to pass the time. Good idea! Let's check out the whole area! We don't want to leave any loose ends! <laughs> there will be no loose ends while you're in my company. I already decided where to go while we wait. For our next stop, I'd like to take you both for a meal. Food? Oh, Paimon likes this plan. Mm-hmm. I picked the venue especially for you. A humble local eatery called Kiminami Restaurant. I thought that the relaxed atmosphere there would suit our day much better than the prohibitively formal one of a high-end restaurant. Shall we head off? Yep, yep. Paimon can't wait. Sato, perfect timing. Your booking was for... well, right now! I believe so. We'll be sticking to the order I placed in advance. As for the other matter we discussed, thank you for your help. Excellent! No problem. And everything you asked for is ready and waiting. Traveler, tiny customer, please wait here for a moment while I prepare your food. Go ahead and take a seat. There is something I need to take care of, but I'll be back momentarily. <clears throat> it's nothing of that sort. I just have a few minor things I need to attend to. I won't be long. She sure left in a hurry. Whatever it is, it must be pretty urgent. So you two are Miss Kamisato's friends? <laughs> Well, we serve all the classics. Sure, there are fancier-looking places out there, but the food here speaks for itself. Hope you enjoy it. Over the years we've been in business, we've gotten to know the Kamisato clan quite well. Miss Kamisato and her brother are both fond of our food. They're always sending staff down here to order something and take it back to them. Her table booking surprised me. Not least because it was a group reservation. This is the first time I've ever heard of Miss Kamisato going out for dinner with friends. The first time ever? Oh, guess that makes us pretty important people, huh? Sure does. 
And I'm probably crossing the line here, but I'm just telling you what others have told me. Apparently, Miss Kamisato doesn't have a lot of friends. That's what I used to think, too. But it turns out the rules of social interaction are a bit more complicated than that. Nobody in the neighborhood has a bad word to say about her. They all say she's beautiful, elegant, graceful. Not to mention that she belongs to one of the most illustrious clans in the land. In short, they see her as a model young lady. But that's just it. People look at her and they see a model of perfection. And they don't feel like that's something they can relate to. So the majority of kids from our ordinary families don't even try to talk to her. So you see, on paper, she sounds like a girl everyone would want to get to know. But in practice, she finds it difficult to make friends. Huh. Paima never would have guessed. We don't speak all that much, but we do go quite a way back. I've always admired her for taking on so many responsibilities at such a young age. So it makes me really happy to see her here with friends today. Anyway, relax. Enjoy your meal, and please, talk to her as much as possible. I know she'll appreciate it. Consider it a favor for the whole neighborhood. Look after her for us. Ah! Huh? That sounded like Ayaka! <sighs> I'm so sorry, Traveler. Could you join me over there for a minute? Um, I need your help with something. I'm sorry. I didn't want to drag you away all of a sudden. I, um, just had a cooking catastrophe. Oh, so that loud noise we heard came from the cooking pot. As you can see, this house is right next to the restaurant. It's where the owner lives. Actually... This whole compound is the family's private property. I asked Miss Kiminami to prepare some ingredients and utensils for me, so that I could cook a special dish here. Right! If there's something you want to eat, you could just order it from the menu. Actually, I wanted to cook something as a gift for Tsubaki. My mother mentioned in her notebook that Tsubaki enjoys food from all over the world. So I thought, if I'm going to meet Tsubaki, Perhaps a dish from overseas would make a fitting gift. A dish from overseas? So anything from outside Inazuma counts, right? If so, then we've got lots of options, don't we? That's what I was thinking. You must have picked up a lot of knowledge about different cultures on your travels. Hopefully including regional cuisines. Can I leave you to finish this task then? Great. But... What kind of overseas dish would make a suitable gift? It needs to survive a journey from the kitchen to the recipient's doorstep. Oh, Paima knows! There's one dish out there that was practically created for this purpose! Pizza! Pizza? It's an assortment of toppings and sauce spread over a bread base and cooked in the oven. And it's so good! That does sound pretty good. It's already?
Add Astra at Thank you for completing today's commission. Add Astra at Add Astra at It's already. Oh, it's ready. It smells delicious. You're an excellent cook, traveler. <sighs> I would love to be able to master dishes from all over the world. Well, all you need to learn is a recipe. We can bring you some more recipes in the future if you like. Great. I look forward to learning from your culinary expertise. How are you all doing? Whoa, is this... Miss Kamisato, this must be the dish you were talking about. Yes, an overseas dish cooked by the Traveler. Could I trouble you to package it for me? Sure, no problem. Oh, it smells good. I bet it tastes amazing. Oh. Now I really want to put something like this on our menu. <laughs> want us to teach you how to make it? Oh, could you? The most satisfying meals are the ones you share with other people. So Paimon thinks that our friends in Mondstadt wouldn't mind us sharing this dish with Inazuma. Really? <sighs> That's great. I've always wanted to learn how to cook some international dishes. If you can write down a recipe for me, I'll add it to our menu and put a promotion where everyone will see it. Since we've become a closed nation, people haven't had the chance to try anything new. Traveler, you're the best! I'll go pack up this dish for Miss Kamisato. Please, make your way back to the restaurant whenever you're ready. The food will be waiting for you. You could have sold that recipe for a high price. 
but you selflessly gave it away for free. You're a wonderful person. I mean it. I admire you a lot, and I'm so proud to be friends with someone of such fine character. Well, you should probably write down the recipe now, no? Yeah, let's make sure we include all the details and then give it to Miss Kiminami. So, pizza. Start with the basic ingredients. Correct, Mundo. Right, now to add the next couple of ingredients. Mmm, yep, that's right. Now for the cooking instructions. Place onto oven rack at high heat and cook until golden brown. All right, it's done. Long may our reputations and our recipes precede us wherever we go in Inazuma. I have no doubt that they will. This dish is exquisite. Cool. Then let's get this recipe to Miss Kiminami Pronto. Hey, have you written out the recipe? Here it is. Thank you! Chloe, this is so exciting. Traveler, Paimon, please accept my sincerest apologies for delaying your meal. <laughs> no problem! Food always- Alright, let's dig in before it gets cold. Well, what do you think? Is Inazuman cuisine to your liking? It's amazing! Paimon loved this one! Oh, and especially that one over there! <laughs> Good. I'm relieved. Um, when I was attempting to cook earlier on, did you chat with the owner at all? And did she, uh, say anything about me? She did, but don't worry. She's just happy for you is all. She's happy for me? Oh, then she must have told you. Did she... Um, what does it matter? I know just as well as anybody else that I've got no friends. Hey, it's not you. Most people just haven't had the chance to talk to you one on one before. Thank you for your comforting words, Paimon. It's all true, though. I just don't have very many friends. Most of the time I'm either accompanied by family or staff. So, everyone must have found it quite a surprise to see me taking you out for a meal. Exactly! You've got at least two friends right here! Aww! Thank you! <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm forgetting myself. Hey now! Expressing your feelings is the right thing to do. Keeping them locked away inside isn't gonna do you any good now, is it? I agree. So, I just want to say how happy I feel that you both see me as a true friend. Of course we do. That's always been our style. If someone's nice to us, we're nice to them too. Friendship can go a long way. Take your mom, for example. She wrote about Tsubaki in her notebook, and now it's made you want to find them too. Yes. I think friendship is an extremely precious thing. And ours is one that I will always treasure. Um, while we're on the topic, though, who is this Tsubaki person anyway? Well, I think I have an idea, but it's just speculative at this point. I think that Tsubaki might be a fox envoy. A fox envoy? Yes, that's what I think. Even I, my mother's own daughter, had never even heard of this friend before. It just seems so... mysterious. So I think it must be someone with transcendent abilities who doesn't show themselves very often. And fox envoys are nothing new. Stories have been told about them in Inazuma since ancient times. You must have met Kuji Yae before. Well, she's a fox envoy. That got me thinking. Maybe there are fox envoys out there in Inazuma that people just don't know about. And maybe Tsubaki is one of them. So Inazuma also has supernatural beings? Uh, when you say also... Well, before Inazuma, we spent some time in Liyue. They have lots of supernatural beings there, like the Adepti. 
All kinds of them, too. Up in the sky, down below the ground, in the water. Really? I've come across such things being asserted in books. But to hear someone talk about it from first-hand experience is extremely surprising. So Li Yue lives up to its reputation. Its culture has a long history and gives rise to the most beautiful legends. Quite captivating. You should come visit Li Yue with us sometime. The best part is, they have loads and loads of delicious delicacies. Really? I would love that. Speaking of delicacies... Traveler, Paimon, have you eaten your fill? Oh, Paimon has. Excellent. Then let's collect the kimono. Then we can pay a visit to my mother's mysterious and transcendent friend. Garmin is ready, Miss Kamisato. I've folded and packaged it for you. Oh, and the other item we discussed? That's ready, too. Thank you very much. No, thank you. It is a beautiful piece of clothing, and it was a pleasure to work on. See you again next time. Traveler, I have a gift for you. Whoa. Looks super fancy! Is that for wearing in your hair? It's a hairpin in the style of a white heron. As well as a hair accessory, you can also use it as an ornament. I couldn't ask for your help and offer nothing at all in return. So this is my gift. I'm glad you like it. Speaking of white herons, that's what your title means, doesn't it? Shirasagi Himegimi. So this gift is like a little piece of yourself. It's just as elegant and beautiful as you are. <laughs> you flatter me, Paimon. If this gift reminds you of me, that is all I could ask for. <laughs> it definitely will. All right, well, now we've got what we came for, we can set off. Time to go meet Tsubaki. <laughs>
transcendent being lives here? Ooh. If someone lives here, then why is it so chilly? Hmm. I'm asking myself the same question. How strange. I'm quite sure that this is the location my mother wrote about, but surely... Hmm. I'm starting to have second thoughts. But since we're here, I still think we should go inside and explore in full. Yeah, makes sense. Who knows? Maybe there's a surprise waiting in there for us. So, um, what does the notebook say exactly? Let me think. A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight. Dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. In the blink of an eye, I'm standing on the path that leads to her house. Sounds like a fairy tale. So your mom would do a little ritual, and just like that, Tsubaki would come to meet her? I have a feeling that it could be some sort of code. Let's get a little closer before coming to any conclusions. Good idea! Bushes on the rocks in here. Could that be anything? Maybe it'll give us a hint. A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight. Dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. Maybe it'll give us a hint. A crane... Maybe it'll give us a hint! A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight. Dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. In the blink of an eye, I'm standing on the path that leads to her house.
There's nobody here. Just this box. Let's see what's inside. Did it open? Did it open? Did our Inazuma Deptus leave any treasure here? What's this? Huh. Looks like a book. It seems to be another notebook. Could it be Tsubaki's notebook? Let's step back outside now. The atmosphere here is different than I'd imagined. Somehow, it makes me a little reluctant to open the notebook. Hyman knows what you mean. Reading in low light is really bad for your eyes. <sighs> Come on, let's get back outside. We'll do just fine. All right, let's see what the notebook says. Oh, ooh, Paimon bets it's all about mysterious treasure. Ah, so exciting! What is it? Uh, why are you whispering all of a sudden? You're making Paimon nervous. You want to let Ayaka read the notebook without distraction. Seems whatever's... But, um, based on her expression, probably not a treasure map. Hmm, what could it be? <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, sorry to keep you waiting so long. No worries, it wasn't long at all. You're a very fast reader. Yes, I have. I think I ought to share the truth of this notebook with you both. Even though the contents are completely different than what I was expecting. Different how? You mean it wasn't a fox envoy who wrote this? Not a fox envoy, no. It turns out that Tsubaki's real identity is my mother herself. Huh? Surprised? Me too. But that's what it says at the very beginning of the notebook. <clears throat> Tsubaki and I are the same person, and yet we are different. When I become Tsubaki, I stop being Kami Sato Kayo and become the most ordinary woman in the world. What follows in these pages is the ordinary, everyday life of a regular person. Nothing more, nothing less. This notebook is, for the most part, a collection of my mother's musings, both private and trivial. All of the things we thought were about Tsubaki were in fact about my mother herself. So that means that the kimono design and the international dishes... Are things that my mother wished to try, yes. 
I'm sure this all sounds utterly bizarre to you, but to me at least, my mother's behavior is completely understandable. Or to put it another way, I... I actually have another side to myself as well. I was at a loss for words when I started reading the contents of the notebook. It almost felt like... Like someone had looked inside my mind, examined my thoughts, and then written them all down on paper. Ayaka! From the moment my mother married my father, she became the mother of the Kamisato household. And with that came all sorts of duties. At the same time, the prestige of the Yashiro Commission brought its own share of responsibility. On top of that, every action she ever took was seen as representing the Kamisato clan. People were always watching her. Under such circumstances, she never had much time to do the things she really wanted to do. After my parents passed away, Ayato and I took over responsibility for the affairs of the clan. We ran into all sorts of difficulties during that time. I'm not sure if people outside the clan could ever imagine what it was like. Every time I found myself up against a difficult issue, I'd ask myself, did my mother go through this too? What would she have done in this situation? Maybe it's because it had been so long since I last saw her, but... Somehow, all that was left of her in my mind was the sight of her that inspired awe and commanded respect. But my image of her was incorrect. When I read this notebook, I realized she was just like me. Underneath whatever position she may have held, she was just an ordinary person. She liked pretty kimonos. She wanted to try food from different places. She yearned to see sights she'd never seen before. Maybe this all sounds immature to you, but I feel just the same way. I want to live life not as Kamisato Ayaka, but as an ordinary woman. Mother wrote that she'd always wanted to go to a local Inazuman festival. She said that sometimes, on a clear night, if you looked out from our house, you could see lights off in the distance. I've seen those lights too. It looks so lively with so many people, and it's so brightly lit it makes the whole sky glow. Of course, sometimes it does make me a bit anxious from a public order perspective. But for someone of my position to just show up at a festival with no warning, it could be considered improper etiquette. Especially in my parents' generation, when the Yashiro Commission didn't have a particularly close relationship with the populace. Even if no one stopped us, the idea of the Yashiro Commission going out into the crowd, it'd certainly draw some strange looks. People would probably start thinking there was trouble afoot. Mother said that she didn't want to put people on edge. She wanted everyone to enjoy the fun and freedom of the festival. She didn't want to disturb them, and didn't have much free time anyway, so she never went. Not even once. So the kimono design, that must have been the outfit she planned on wearing if she ever did go to a festival, right? That's right. And sometimes, festivals sell international food. She wanted to try that, too. I hope this isn't a disrespectful thing to say, but... I never knew my mother was so in touch with her inner child. <laughs> well, that's not disrespectful at all. Paimon thinks your mom was the best of both. A big softy on the inside, and a big sense of responsibility on the outside. Hmm. Huh. Without knowing it, I've ended up fulfilling several of my mother's wishes already. <sighs> but going to a festival is the one thing that I cannot do for her. Perhaps this is one thing that can simply never be. I understand. Thank you. I think I realize something now. Mother and I are so similar in so many ways. The things she faced are things that I too will go on to face. She chose to place her unfulfilled wishes onto the identity of Tsubaki. As for me, I've already decided. Oh, so you decided on an alter ego too? No, um... 
I don't plan to do anything like that. I think... I think I will set myself a new goal. To live each day without regrets. So, um... Traveler, I... <clears throat> <sighs> Deep breaths, Ayaka. Deep breaths. <sighs> Would you be at all interested in checking out an Inazuman festival? Paimon's been dying to go ever since we saw that poster! Paimon would love to go with you, Ayaka! Hey, come on, don't make fun! It's just because I used to have the same concerns my mother did. But now, I don't think I need to worry about it so much. I'm going to be true to myself and fulfill the wish that my mother and I shared. I know that you of all people can understand me going my own way on this. So, let's do this, you and me. Let's go to a festival together. Paimon wants to come! Festivals here have loads of tasty snacks too, right? Oh, and fun and games! Great! Thanks, you guys. If we head over now, we should still make it in time. Oh, good point! Today is the last day, right? What are we waiting for? Let's go!